The Department of Labor's fiduciary rule, which goes into effect beginning April 10, 2017, will change the landscape of the securities industry. What does it mean for you? The rule, which covers IRAs, 401ks, and other ERISA plans, is likely to result in a movement away from brokerage accounts to investment advisory accounts, which means more opening for investment advisors who are required to have their Series 65 and 66 licenses. And that means now is the perfect time to start studying with Solomon Exam Prep. In 2009, the Department of Labor, also known as the DOL, began working on the fiduciary rule, which is also known as the conflict of interest rule. The aim of the new rule is to protect retirement savings by requiring recommendations that are in an investor's best interest. The transition period for this rule begins April 10th, 2017, and will continue until January 1st, 2018. Almost any broker dealer or financial advisor who is providing recommendations or advice in regard to 401ks and IRA accounts and other ERISA plans is considered by this rule to be an investment advice fiduciary. This includes, but is not limited to, recommendations given to an investor in a 401k plan or IRA account or the fiduciary of a plan. A plan fiduciary is a person who manages a retirement plan and must put the plan's interest before his own. According to the rule, a representative is considered to be giving investment advice regarding a retirement account if the representative gives a recommendation, so there's no surprise there, the recommendation is given for a fee or any kind of compensation. So if you don't get paid for it, it's not investment advice according to this law. And if the recommendation regards what to do with an investment, so for example, buy, sell, hold, uh, how to invest securities or other investments after they're rolled over, transferred, or distributed from the retirement plan or IRA, or if it regards management of securities or other investments. This includes things like advice about what to add to a portfolio, recommending another investment advisor or manager, and advice about rollovers, transfers, and distributions from a retirement plan or IRA. The person must also meet at least one of the following criteria to be considered a fiduciary by the rule. He either represents himself as a fiduciary, which is simple enough, or he gives the advice by written or verbal agreement. So it doesn't have to be a formal contract, but it does have to be agreed upon by both parties. In the context of the DOL rule, a recommendation is any communication that could reasonably be considered a suggestion for an investor to pursue or avoid a course of action. That means a rep does not have to explicitly tell an investor to make a certain decision in order to give a recommendation. The more tailored the communication is to the individual, the more likely it will be considered a recommendation. However, simply providing certain services or other general information will not be considered a recommendation. A person may also provide investment education without this being considered a recommendation. The Department of Labor's fiduciary rule is also known as the conflict of interest rule. This is because it requires representatives to give advice that is in the best interest of the investor, and it prohibits representatives from being paid for any advice or recommendation that creates a conflict of interest. And this kind of compensation is known as conflicted compensation. Variable compensation is an example of a potential conflict of interest. So representatives may push products for which they have the opportunity to be paid more. And this includes variable compensation for advice about or transactions in a retirement account. So under the new rule, a rep can't receive a commission or any other form of compensation based on, for example, the size or the frequency of transactions. However, there are some exemptions that allow reps to receive so-called conflicted compensation, which includes commissions. And one of these exemptions is known as the Best Interest Contract Exemption, or the BIC Exemption. To qualify for the BIC Exemption, representatives must affirm their fiduciary status in writing, and this acknowledges that the rep is in fact a fiduciary, 
and that the advice was not given in a non-fiduciary manner. The representative must engage in impartial conduct, which includes giving prudent advice that is in the customer's best interest, not making misleading statements, and being compensated no more than is reasonable. The rep must adopt policies that will mitigate any harm that could come from conflicts of interest. So in this case, it's not enough to disclose conflicts of interest. A rep must demonstrate that he is actively preventing his conflicts of interest from having a negative impact on the investor. And representatives must provide disclosure information regarding conflicts of interest and advisory fees. This information must be given to the investor upfront. So if all of these requirements are met, then the rep may receive so-called conflicted compensation. If a representative is charging a level fee, that is a set fee that is disclosed in advance, instead of a variable fee, then the requirements of the fiduciary rule are less burdensome. To be considered a level fee, the size of the fee must stay the same regardless of the size or frequency of the transaction, and there must be no additional commissions. So level fees include flat fees and fees that are a percentage of assets under management. In these cases, the rep is required to provide a written statement of fiduciary status, comply with the standards of impartial conduct, and document the reasons for recommending a level fee arrangement. The DOL fiduciary rule will require reps to use the best interest contract exemption if they want to sell variable annuities or indexed annuities. The Department of Labor determined that variable annuities, indexed annuities, and other similar types of annuities come with significant complexity and significant investment risk. The DOL also associates these types of annuities with conflicted sales practices. This is why such annuities are subject to the increased protection provided by the BIC exemption. Many firms might move away from commission-based brokerage business. In fact, on October 6, 2016, Merrill Lynch announced that it will no longer offer commission-based brokerage accounts after the rule goes into effect. They will instead offer level fee investment advisory services. And many say that this move by Merrill Lynch might signal a larger trend within the industry. If so, it would mean more openings for people who have passed the Series 65 or Series 66 exam. And that means that now is the perfect time to start studying. Solomon Exam Prep has just the materials you need. Solomon's industry-leading study materials have helped thousands pass their Series 65 and Series 66 securities licensing exams. Solomon's Series 65 and Series 66 total study packages include an exam study guide, an online exam simulator, a video lecture, and an audiobook. With these materials, you will have the tools you need to pass the Series 65 or Series 66 and enter the world of investment advisory services. For more information, visit www.solomonexamprep.com or give us a call at 503-601-0212.